Reality is vast and full of the unknown. The sum of all knowledge and theory is nothing compared to the possibilities of the universe. If there's anything that modern science can lean on as an absolute truth, is that we should above all else be constantly questioning, constantly adding to our knowledge. There isn't much that is immutable in science. Theories can change and evolve, including our understanding of all reality. Keeping this open mindset is key since a relatively new scientific-slash-mathematical theory with parallels from ancient mythology has gained credibility over the last few decades. That our universe is not the only one of its kind. That there are or have been many, perhaps infinite, universes. They might exist in parallel, or our universe might be the current iteration of an ongoing cycle. Cycles. Infinity a being or concept with a multitude of forms. These are mythological themes that have existed for thousands of years. And in fact, the idea of a multiverse doesn't belong solely to modern society. For some civilizations and mythologies, the multiverse is part of their understanding of reality. Hindus don't all necessarily believe in a multiverse as we understand it. It's more commonly believed that there are 14 worlds, 7 upper and 7 lower, but the multiverse does exist in Hindu texts. As Hinduism is the oldest religion in the world, there are many Hindu sacred texts, and the details of their stories vary. In at least two of those sources, we find, first, the idea that our universe is just one in an infinite string of universes which cycle between creation and destruction over billions of years, and second, the idea that universes are created and destroyed in droves by the breath of a deity floating in a cosmic ocean. The main sacred texts of Hinduism are the Upanishads, written in Vedic Sanskrit, of which there are more than 200, with 10 being the most important, called the principal Upanishads. These are the basis of Hindu belief, but more texts were added over time. Later, we get the Indian Puranas, which cover legends, folklore, and many other subjects. In the Bhagavata Purana, probably written between the 8th and 10th century CE, the nature of the universe is described in this way. There are innumerable universes besides this one, and although they are unlimitedly large, they move about like atoms in you. Therefore, you are called unlimited. The you here is referring to a deity, since this comes from a discourse. Also, this is just one translation and is modernized. The words atoms and universes may not have been the original words, but the ideas can still be relevant today as our view of the cosmos has evolved. It also states that the countless universes, each enveloped in its shell, are compelled by the wheel of time to wander within you, like particles of dust blowing about in the sky. This is striking imagery when you set it against the mathematical and physics-based idea of the multiverse, and it was written at least a thousand years ago. The Hindu tradition also tells that the supreme protector god and god of all reality, Vishnu, lies in the causal ocean, and the cycle of his breathing is what creates and destroys universes. Every exhale creates a multitude of universes, and every inhale destroys. With every universe created, he enters it as an aspect of himself so that he is present in every one. Each breath, or conversely, day, takes billions of years since in Hinduism the importance or magnitude of each god determines their relative time. In other words, one day for Vishnu is billions of years for us. This cosmology most resembles the theories of the multiverse as we think of them. However, Hindu texts don't get into the ideas of parallel versions of yourself and the like. The Hindu multiverse is a manifestation of infinity and a cosmology, or a way of understanding the structure of the universe. But what is the multiverse, and how does it fit into modern myth? I'm not a physicist, so I can't get too technical, but from my understanding, the multiverse theory came about from pure mathematics, as a theory that would allow certain formulas about the physical nature of the universe to balance out. However, there is no observed data or phenomena that directly support the theory. 
It's pure theoretical math and physics. This doesn't discount it out of hand, it just means that we don't have hard proof. Scientists and mathematicians have put forward several theories over the last few decades, but there is one theory of the multiverse that stands above the others in terms of credibility, cosmic inflation. This theorizes that at the moment of the Big Bang, an area outside of the universe expanded at a speed faster than the speed of light. Only things inside the universe are subject to the speed limit of the speed of light, after all. As it expanded, this area of inflation would create a series of disconnected universes that bud off of each other, and the expansion would continue infinitely. Simply put, this theory has gained the most ground because it solves a few problems that physicists have had, reconciling our theories of physics and thermodynamics with what we see in the observable universe. Talking about these theories puts me in a kind of reverential mindset. For me, these theories are right next door to mythology, though many scientists would probably disapprove. But when seen through a mythological lens and given the psychological task of making the universe A. make more sense, and B. elicit a sense of awe, then it's undeniable that for a certain kind of person, cosmological theory and the idea of the multiverse are modern mythology. Comic books have taken the idea of the multiverse and run with it, creating hierarchies of alternate universes that allow them to tell all kinds of stories using familiar characters with a strange twist. Many times the alternate universes or alternate Earths are darker, twisted versions of our own. The upcoming Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness movie seems to be going in that direction as well, even taking on famed horror director Sam Raimi. In the trailers, we can see evil versions of the main characters, twisted realities, and horrific imagery from other universes. Speaking of the trailers, I have to point out one shot in particular where we see what looks like an evil version of Doctor Strange with multiple arms. In Hinduism, there is a group called the Asura, which are conceived of as evil anti-gods. The Asura are often depicted with multiple arms, just as the gods sometimes are. According to the Shiva Purana, the pride and vanity of the Asura made them a threat to the gods, and so they had to be destroyed. We already know that Stephen Strange has had issues with pride, since that was a major part of his character in a previous movie. It seems like we might see that pride taken to its extreme in the new movie, with some alternate version of him becoming a powerful villain. While the multiverse is a relatively new theory in mathematics and physics, it has mythological roots stretching back hundreds of years. For us in modern times, however, it serves one of the same core functions as ancient mythological cosmogonies, to provide a logical yet awe-inspiring framework for the universe. Think about how the Big Bang affects your view of the universe in a psychological sense. Does it make things make more sense? Does it bring some relief to know that there is an agreed-upon order to everything, backed up by one of humanity's most credible institutions? I'm speaking generally about the institutions of science and math. If so, it does indeed serve the same psychological purpose as, say, the Norse tale of the Nine Realms being created from the body of the giant Ymir in the Ginunga Gap, or any other creation myth. So the theory of the multiverse is part of the same mythology not myth in the sense of a lie or a made-up story, but in the sense of a framework for understanding all things, the cosmological sense. Ultimately, the multiverse asks us to consider the possibility of infinity in a new way, one that pushes our view of reality to new, mind-bending dimensions. <laughs>